so many um, planes about to take off in Dublin. Yeah, I've just watched the American land in front of me here, but they, uh, they're 128 outbound and about the same inbound today. Um, the passenger numbers are about 22,000. You'd have just short of 100,000 on a Monday in July normally. Uh, most in 2019, uh, that can uh, be used as a benchmark anymore. Um, what we'll see probably is load factors of, I mean, the Malaga flight, the Aer Lingus Malaga flight to good gauge, a uh, load factor was just over 60% when it took off this morning. And Ryanair low running a bit higher, uh, about over 70%. But we are still the most disconnected in Europe. I mean, Amsterdam is running at uh, over eight, just around 80% of capacity today. Uh, Istanbul will be 92%, and Athens somewhere in between. Dublin is running at less than 30%. And can I ask you just at this stage, I mean, what is the criteria for those coming, from, say, from the UK or from Spain back into Ireland again? Is the COVID passport being sought? COVID passport uh, is applied for everyone arriving from the European Union and has since July the 1st they've been arriving. The big difference today is we have it to travel in the other direction. If you don't have it, if you haven't got it yet, what has been accepted on the ground is that the airlines are accepting the card you have, which you get with your second vaccination, which is signed and has a date and a batch number on it. And they're also accepting it as immigration in the country to apply to. That's European Union key. It's really important because... Obviously, Britain, uh, we have a common travel area agreement, but people with uh, travelling from Britain uh, are using the NHS COVID cards, and that's not subject to Europe. That's uh, subject to a series of bilaterals in important countries like Spain, Portugal. People arriving from Britain and from the US, very big news as of today, no PCR test required if you're fully vaccinated. That means fully vaccinated uh, are free to travel with European COVID passport and also children up to the age of 12, it used to be six, arriving in Ireland, no test required. That's a very big move. You wouldn't think it because it was announced uh, by the officials on Tuesday, but then the politicians put a lot of cold water on it, and the uh, website was updated at about 11 o'clock on Friday. But as of now, or when I last looked, we have contradictory information on the government website on that, but you can actually fly in from Britain, from a USA, if you're fully vaccinated without having to self-isolate and without having to do a PCR test in advance. That's a very, very big move, as significant almost as the digital COVID uh, passport, which is uh, applies just within the European Union. And can I ask you, just in relation to Irish people wanting to go to the United States, there was talk uh, that um, President Joe Biden would, would, would... They're just not let in still, that's the case. No, it, it could change in days, as, you know, we've the most pro-Irish... Uh, administration in Washington that we've had since John F. Kennedy's time. So it should all fall into place when the officials uh, get their talks done. Uh, it's probably, there's talks at European level, but there'll probably be separate uh, considerations for Anna because of the common travel area. Uh, but in, as it stands, we're not let in, but vaccinated Americans can travel here without a PCR test and without having to self-isolate. Provided they arrive today, by the way, if you arrived last Friday, the old regulations apply. So can you see inbound uh, traffic from the United States then, uh, Owen Curry, in, in the coming days, um, as in tourism coming into us? Odd, oddly enough, there's quite a few of them, um, Keith. There's quite a few have arrived and quite a few are going through the self-isolation and self-catering and things like that. American, vaccinated Americans uh, tend to be the ones that come, the age group that come to Ireland will, will be mostly vaccinated and they'll also be very compliant in terms of not being reckless about how they behave. So we've seen quite a few of them, but the reality is this came so late in the day that um, it's too late to save the summer for our inbound tourism. Uh, America is our second biggest market by numbers and it's huge in terms of spend so it's really been too late our Aer Lingus will be operating on 40 percent of their capacity for the rest of the year they just decided to cancel the rest because they, they were too, there was too much uncertainty and for instance they have reduced all of their american routes and remember we used to have 18 of them they come down to three they're new york chicago boston uh, Washington is due to resume in, in uh, August, and there is some talk of San Francisco coming later in the year, that direct flight, that very important direct flight, but that's all subject to bookings, and Aer Lingus have been very, very disappointed, uh, a series of disappointments. Every time they set some sort of uh, business plan in, in operation, it was thwarted. Yeah. 
So, um, is it as busy as you thought in Dublin Airport, uh, finally? On Much as I'd expected, Kate. Really? Like 30% uh, is basically where we were last week. A little bit more today. Uh, flights like the Malagas and the Faroes uh, had already, there were people jumping a bit early. But remember, an awful lot of what's going to happen end of July is not going to be the bucket and spade. It's going to be the reconnection of families. Those Polish flights are really important. Those Romanian flights are really important. We'll have 56 flights a week to Poland. Uh, through the summer and um, that's not buckets in spades that a lot of that is just the pure business of reconnecting families grandparents who haven't seen grandchildren all of that sort of stuff and there's a lot of that going to happen in uh, august maybe september uh, there's a bit of hesitancy but they're a bit tentative uh, they'll start we'll, we'll start probably seeing movement then in terms of the traditional leisure industry but you know the even the narrative at the weekend was continuing to try um uh, you know, disrupt uh, the uh, the business of, uh, of uh, reconnecting as much as possible, and to calm down people's expectations of um, non-essential or leisure uh, discretionary travel. Well, listen, good luck uh, with it. I was looking at some of the stats over the weekend. Dublin has quite a few flights. Cork has a few flights. Now, that's far less in. Um, Shannon and Ireland West Airport knock. Trouble, yeah. um, and knock, just... is, knock is a breakers yard for A380s and it's very hard to see, you know, it, it, the way this the recovery will come is, as you say, Dublin will get a spell of recovery. Uh, Ryanair have supported Shannon and we've got some interesting stuff there, including a new route there, but they, it, it's going to be slow and tougher for the regional airports and they have not been... There's a, they, they need they needed some sort of coherent strategy that uh, the likes of other, that other countries like um, the Italy's and Greece's and uh, even the the Baltic states have brought in. Uh, we didn't have anything like that from the Irish government. It was as if they were um, cautious that any talk about regional aviation would be criticised by the health um, advisors. What do you mean, um, um, Ireland West Airport Knock is a breakers yard for A380s? Is it? Well, the, 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 that's the activity that's there at the moment. Uh, it's very successful, by the way. Uh, A380s uh, being thrown in and their parts being taken. Uh, um, it's been a, a bit of business for uh, a company up there. But the, for many weeks of the dark period of lockdown, the only activity you would see on your flight uh, radar and all of the the um, the, uh, the apps that track these, the only activity was the returning A380s. Wow, and they were being broken down then from there. Indeed, it's one of many places that are doing that. The A380, as uh, you're a big aviation fan, Keith, it's a sad day, but the day of the A380 seems to have passed, as has, it seems to have, the, that the uh, day for the 747, the iconic 747, seems to have passed. Two of the casualties of COVID, but uh, in many ways, the sort of uh, industry that they were built to serve has changed beyond recognition. Oh, my God. Well, I'm, I'm getting old. On Listen, you have another interview. I better let you go to that. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today on the uh, programme. The comment lines are open if you want to get through to us.